What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Heavy Live with Scoop B. I am Brandon Scoopy Robinson, senior writer at Heavy.com. We are live on all of Heavy's Facebook Live platforms. Heavy on Celtics, heavy on Lakers, heavy on Warriors. We are on Periscope, on via Twitter, at Scoop B. We are also um, on Heavy's YouTube channel. Enough talking out of me. We got a special guest. We got the right reverend, Kendrick Perkins. <laughs> <laughs> you looking smooth, brother. What's going on? Yeah, what's going on, B Scoops? Man, I appreciate you having me on, Scoop B. You know what I'm saying? You my boy. I thank you. I appreciate it. I know you're ready to get down to some good conversation. Let's get it. Yes, sir. So a couple things. Number one, mm. uh, do you like James Harden in Brooklyn, Philly, Milwaukee, or Miami? Oh, you know, man, listen, the best situation for James Harden would be James Harden in Brooklyn. If he okay. goes to Brooklyn, we could see that Golden State 73 and 9 team all over again. Because I, I just don't know how you would be able to stop those three guys offensively. You already going to have enough trouble trying to stop KD and Kyrie. You had James Harden. You got two of the best scores to ever touch the damn basketball on the same damn team, along with one of the most skilled guys in Kyrie Irving to ever touch the damn basketball. So I don't want to hear about chemistry. I don't care about none of that. You That's a team right there that you don't have to coach. If you got so much offensive firepower, you don't have to coach them. So I would love – I think it would be must-see TV if James Harden was on the Nets. Like, that, they would have to go back and redo the schedule and put them on the schedule for the national televised games every single game, 72 of them, because that would be must-see TV. All right, so I got to take a step back for a second. So from what I've been told, in order for any deal to potentially happen between the Houston Rockets and the Brooklyn Nets, it would have to include Kyrie or KD. That's been said on the internet. I've heard more along the lines of Kyrie. I've heard that it was it would have to be a package including Karis LeVert, Jared Allen, Spencer Dinwiddie. If you're Brooklyn, do you give up Kyrie or KD to get James Harden? First of all, KD is not going anywhere, but... If I'm Brooklyn and I'm looking to do what's best for this Brooklyn team and I'm looking to get better, hell yeah, I trade Kyrie for James Harden in the heartbeat. I don't even think about that. But if you also got to think about on the flip side of, you got to run it by Kevin Durant. And they formed this team together. So, you know, Kevin Durant is not going to turn his back on Kyrie. But I'm not Kevin Durant. I don't owe Kyrie nothing if I'm the GM of this team or if I'm in the front office. My job is to do or make the best decision for the Brooklyn Nets. And mm -hmm. if I have to trade Kyrie head up for James Harden, God damn it, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I am. Um, you made mention of Kyrie. Man, I know that you guys, you more so than Kai. Kai has been talking not so much, but when you look at what you said about his talent, you've been a teammate of Kyrie's. Um, you, you came on my podcast, Scoopy Radio, and you kind of um, itemized your thought process about Kai. We've moved past that. What do you like about his game? What do you like about him as a person? Well, the thing I love about Kyrie as a person is that he's the ultimate competitor. One thing about it is that no matter, no matter how bad of a game he's having, he's going to compete. Like, he he. He could go. He could be over fifteen and still have the last shot and have the confidence to sink it. Right. Mm -hmm. The thing about Kyrie game that's so unique is that we've never seen a guy that handles the pill and is able to maneuver through traffic the way he is at that size. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, his skill set we haven't seen that before. Not for a guy that's you know six one of uh, six foot under. Right. He's not that tall. And below the basket, he's not that athletic, but he's one of the greatest finishers that we've seen of all time. So you look at Kyrie, man, and, and you know, arguably in my eyes, he would be a future Hall of Famer, right? I mean, that's that's without a doubt. But the way the, – what he brings to the game and what he's brought to the game, 
you can't ever replace that. Perk, what did you make of the Lakers, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis in their offseason? Man, they won. They won, school B. They won big time. Like, the way that Rob Palenka was aggressive in, in, in free agency, I was expecting Lawrence Frank to be that aggressive for the Clippers. Hmm. Right? I mean, just think about it. Rob Palenka got off a Danny Green contract and went signed to Wesley Matthews for $3.6 million. Right. He was able to land Montrez Harrell uh, from his rival, cross-town rival, six man of the year, a guy that's giving you almost 20 a night. Then you go and get, then you already had Dennis Stroder, who you traded for, and got him back, a, a guy that's still in his prime, six, was a runner-up for the six man of the year, and who's capable of giving you 20 a night also. So you sign Anthony Davis to a five-year, you lock in LeBron James for two two years after next year, and it's like Rob is making all the right moves. He's making all the right moves of, of, a, of a team that's looking to win his first title. And 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 I, I'm looking at this Laker offseason and the additions that they added, and mm-hmm. I'm like, if somebody don't make a move right now, they are the clear-cut favorite. I think that Danny Green and Dwight Howard were the additions that the Philadelphia 76ers needed. What say you? Oh, I agree. I'm a fan of both of them guys. I think Dwight Howard has learned and his time from being away from the game, he's got a different appreciation. His leadership skills are better. So he's going to help Joel and B out tremendously. And what people don't realize is that Dwight and Joel can play together. Because Joel loves to pop. He loves to pick and pop. The White could be that dynamic roller to the rim. Like, I could see them playing spot minutes together and, and actually doing pretty well. But he could mentor Joel and B. And then you take Danny Green, who's just a, a class act, right? You can't replace that much championship pedigree. Yes, he's a guy that can stretch the floor and shoot the three, is what the Philadelphia 76ers has been lacking in space. Mm hmm. But his leadership skills, you can't replace that. That's a championship pedigree, man. And 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 a guy that's going there that is going to be on the same page with Doc Rivers because of the championship mindset and he how he's going to embrace this role. I love it also for the Philadelphia 76ers. When I look at the 76ers and I look at Danny Green, uh two two numbers I want to throw out there. Number one, um, Danny Green this past season shot 36% on catch and shoots. Dennis Schroeder shot 40% mm. on catch and shoots this past season for the Oklahoma for excuse me. Yeah, for the for the Thunder. Yeah. Um, when you look at Danny Green, do you expect him to shoot more or less in Philadelphia as opposed to this past season in LA with the Lakers? He's gonna shoot more. Uh he's gonna be in that starting role. I could see them going with a lineup like Seth Curry, Ben Simmons, uh, you know, uh Joel Embiid, uh, you know, Danny Green and, and Tobias Harris. And what's going to happen is, is that he's going to get open looks because of the paint being so congested because of Ben Simmons and his lack of shooting. Mm-hmm. So once Danny Green started knocking that down and making guys respect him again, it's going to open up for Ben Simmons. So I can see him taking a lot more threes than what he did with the Lakers. Perk, when I look at the 76ers, Two things stand out to me. Number one, not this past season, but the season before, the Sixers had to make the decision to retain Jimmy Butler, to resign J.J. Redick, and also keep Tobias Harris at the same time. Jimmy walked, J.J. walked, and they resigned Tobias. They added Al Horford. Ben Simmons was the starting point guard, and then you had issues with health throughout the course of the season. So here's, here's my question. When I looked at the Sixers two seasons ago, oftentimes in the half-court set, you saw Jimmy Butler at times moving the ball as the point forward with Ben Simmons not having the point guard duties, and it worked for him. I use this analogy often. He looks like a taller Stephon Marbury with, with, with LeBron James' size holding the ball like bread, getting to the basket with ease. Right. When I look at the Sixers this year, do you like Ben Simmons as – 
a role that LeBron played in Miami with the Heat. Do you see him more as a scorer, or do you still see him as the primary ball handler within Doc Rivers' system? Well, I think you're going to see a mixture of both, and I think that's the beauty of ha of having Doc Rivers. Doc Rivers is going to be that guy who who's he's going to put Ben Simmons on the low block and actually space Joel. He's right. going to be that guy who's going to use Ben Simmons in high pick and rolls and having him go to either get a deep seal where he can shoot his jump hook or be a live threat to the basket. And then he's going to use Ben Simmons to be that guy of playing the dunker spot. And then on top of that, in transition, Ben, go, get it and run, get it and go. So I can hear Doc right now yelling at Ben Simmons about push it, push it, push it, pace, pace, pace. So in transition, we can see Ben Simmons running that point like we always seen him do. But in the half court set, we could see him being that power forward that he was at LSU and killing people in the paint, being a lob threat, getting easy dunks, using his athleticism, shooting that jump hook. So I think we're going to see a mixture of both. And I think this is why, along with Doc Rivers making Joel and B better and having and holding him accountable and putting him in position to be successful, I think that this is why Doc Rivers and the Philadelphia 76ers is a match made in heaven. Perk, learn me something. Does Simmons remind you more of Jason Kidd, LeBron James, or Magic Johnson? Mm, he, he, he's like a baby LeBron to me. Just because, you know, 6'10", that stocky 250-pound frame, you know, he's strong, freaking nature as far as attacking the basket and getting to the rim, mm -hmm. fast, athletic, like all that just reminds me of Braun, just that side of his game and who Ben Simmons is, the way that he is defensively. You know, he's a dog. People just don't talk about that enough, but he could have possibly won defensive player of the year this year. Like, we we can't knock that. Like, you know, a guy who could switch one through five, who who's an underrated rim protector, and, and I, I do see him being a baby LeBron more, more than anybody else. Does Blake Griffin fit in Detroit? Um, I have to see their team, uh, to be honest. Uh, you know, I, I just want Blake Griffin to be healthy. If he's healthy and he gets back to the Blake Griffin that we, we watched grow, uh, the Blake Griffin that can stretch the floor now, who still got face-ups, who's still a hell of a finisher around the basket, uh, we could be in for a real treat. Uh, the thing is, is that we need that healthy Blake Griffin, and he should be. He had extended time to rest. So I'm looking forward to seeing what Blake Griffin is going to bring back to the table. But it's interesting you brought his name up. It just goes to show you the power of playing in those big markets, right? Like the L.A. markets, right? Like with the Clippers, that's all we used to see is Blake Griffin, Blake Griffin. As soon as he got traded to Detroit, we didn't see Blake Griffin that much, and it's crazy. Do you like Chris Paul with the Phoenix Suns? Like, I love it. Me too. I, love it. I think he elevates the Suns to a top five team in the West. And if anybody is doubting it after watching him with the OKC Thunder, you go and package him up with Devin Booker, a guy who could lead the league in scoring, like a guy that's literally a walking bucket, you know, like and DeAndre Ayton. Chris Paul's about to do what he did for DeAndre Jordan, what he is about to, he, he's going to do that for DeAndre Eight, And then they, they forget about the other pieces. You know, the young kid Cam from, uh, I think, North Carolina, that's shooting mm -hmm. free ball. They forget about, you know, uh, Jay Crowder, who they just added. You know, uh, and, and I'm loving it under Monty Williams. I think they're going to be a top five team in the Western Conference. Tell me something. When I look at the big man position, it's 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 hybrid. It's it's you you you're, the way you play big man, the way you and Shaq play big man. It's a new game, um, respectfully. But when I look at today's game, I feel like Dwight Howard was ahead of ahead of his class as it related to big men that can dribble, that like to you know do other things than just stand in the post all day. That being said, when you look at the Aitons, when you look at the Joel Embiid's, when you look at the Carl Anthony Towns, I believe Hakeem Olajuwon was also ahead of his time. He was literally a center that was a guard. Absolutely. When you place those three guys, you're a big man. You have the perspective. 
one through three, where do you rank Aiton, Towns, and Embiid? Mm. Well, I'm, I'm gonna say this: uh, Embiid is number one. Okay. Carl Anthony Towns is number two, and 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 Aiton is number three. That's that's how I rank them. And when you look at Embiid, I mean, he's a generational talent. Mm -hmm. Like the things that he's able to do is 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 ridiculous. And the only thing that's holding Embiid back is his cardio and condition. That's the only thing that's holding him back. If he was to drop 35 pounds, you could book the MVP going to Joel and B. You could book that if he was to get in some shape. Like if he got in shape, it would be open for the league. When I look at uh, MB, when I look at Kevin Garnett, a guy you were teammates with in Boston, when I look at Hakeem Olajuwon, there's one thing that stands out to me. You know what it is? What's the footwork? Ooh, yeah. yeah. And Hakeem played soccer like Patrick Ewing played soccer. Right. Tim Duncan was a swimmer, and then he became, you know, a, a basketball player, a, 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 probably the best power forward that, that we've seen in our lifetime. Um, does Joel Embiid and his footwork remind you of Hakeem Olajuwon? Absolutely. Everything about it. If you, when he go into his bag on the low block, it's nobody shaking and jiving like that or, or, or giving you the slippery eels, the up and unders, the, the face ups to the, the fake spins to the turnarounds. Oh, you ain't biting on the fake spin. Then I'm going to give you the full spin, but I'm going to give you an up and under with it to the jump hook. Like, all this in his bag, and that that's a Kim Elijah one. And like I said, Scoop B, if you if if he just lose thirty five pounds, if he quit flirting with that three hundred pound range and just right. drop them thirty five, we could be we could possibly be witnessing and possibly saying that Joel and B game mimics a Kim Elijah one because the Kim was in shape. You got you got that you know that strong cut up body that's 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 you know. Wiry, but you know he, you know he got it. He's strong down there. But if Joel was to get his body in any type of shape or get it close to a king, oh man, what? Perk, Luka Doncic, year yeah. three. Mm. Are you scared? Yeah, yeah. You know, look. Despite Luka doing his twenty nine nine and nine last year in the regular season. The worst thing that happened for the NBA was Luca saw that he could go to war against the Clippers, and he hung in there. Like, literally was putting up some ridiculous numbers against the Clippers, a team that was stacked full of guys, um, a team that was stacked full of guards that, that was supposed to be uh, considered elite defenders. Kawhi mm -hmm. Leonard, Patrick Beverly, Paul George, and he went to work on them. So if you could go to work on them, in a seven-game series, he's coming back like, shoot, I want all the smoke with everybody in the league. And he should feel that way. Lee got to watch out, man. That kid is special. He's got goons. He got a, 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 a nth degree black belt in James Johnson protecting him. How much of that um, do you think benefits Luka in Dallas this season? Oh, that was a huge pickup. And, and Dallas know what they was doing. You, you know, you go get somebody who's going to protect your star, who – don't have to worry about looking over his shoulder because he has a big brother like Johnson over there to, to watch out for him. So it was a big power move by the Mavericks. When you look at um, the Washington Wizards, mm -hmm. your former Thunder teammate, Russell Westbrook, joins Bradley Beal. The last time that Russell played alongside a swingman Maybe a, a Bradley Bill caliber, maybe would be Paul George. He was his MVP caliber season. Um, or actually, he won an MVP that year. He was teammates with Paul George. What do you make of Russell Westbrook in Washington, and do you like it? I love it. I, I think when you start from the top and looking at uh, the coaches and Scott Brooks and Robert Pack, people that Russ is familiar with from Oklahoma City that he respects and that he's going to listen to. So them guys already can hold Russ accountable. But on top of that, you're getting a healthy Russ that wants the ball in his hands, not to just score, but people forget that.
to average a triple double, you got to be in double figures something else, and that was a sense. And he loves to make guys better. And we, like you said, we watched him put the key in Paul George back when he had the best season of his career. We're talking about the same caliber player in Bradley Beal. This guy averaged almost, what, 30 points or did average 30 points this post this past season? And you telling me he's getting a guy like Russell Westbrook, and I know how Russ thinks he's going to defer to him because he wants to prove everybody wrong, that people can't play with me and be successful in their individual accolades, as far as their individual accolades. And I'm looking at Bert Tons that's spacing on the floor, the kid that they drafted in the lottery who can shoot the ball. That's spacing. I'm looking at all these pieces that the um, you know, that the Washington Wizards has, and I'm like, you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if we we looking at another Oklahoma City Thunder story what, that just happened this past season, where they finished top five in the East, and they don't want to be a team that you're gonna want to see in the first round because they're gonna be hard to put out. Perk, do you like Zach Levine and the Chicago Bulls this season? I love Zach Levine. Do I like him with the Chicago Bulls? Nah. I think he, he needs to be somewhere where Zach Levine needs to be a number two guy, right? He needs to be a number two guy. I don't believe he's a number one guy. Yeah, he can go out there and get you 30, but he's not a guy that's going to get you over the hump night in and night out. You know, with Zach Levine, I just see too much of, you know, he have – six dominant games, and then all of a sudden he disappeared for six. And then you see him again six more. I want to see that stretch where it's 12 or 15 games in a row where he's dominating and having, like, you know, a 15-game span where he's playing exceptional basketball. And so uh, I don't like him on Chicago. I thought, you know, before the Bucks got uh, – Drew Holiday, I thought they could have made a push to get Zach Levine some type of way. That would have been a good addition, but I love Drew Holiday. So I'm a fan of Zach Levine's, but I'm not a fan of him on the Chicago Bulls. Does Buddy Hill eventually finding his way to the Dallas Mavericks make all of the sense in the world? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And Buddy is now – he's he, he is a dangerous combination with, with, with Luka. Like this is gonna be dangerous. A guy that wants to get players involved. It's a it's a reason why LeBron said on the road tripping podcast that I wanted to make Luca the brand of my sneaker, the first name of my sneaker under my under LeBron James because he knows how special he is and he sees a lot of himself in Luca. And just watching him and thinking of a uh, Buddy Hill, a guy that you better not leave. For. And now you possibly have to help, or oh, this is going to be wonders. And then fight. But he could get away from all that nonsense that's going on in Sacramento and get to a well-run organization by Mark Cuban in the Dallas Mavericks. Paul George got the bag, brother. Five years max where he can make up to $226 million. If we got half of that, we could buy an island somewhere, man. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what do you make of that extension with the Clippers that Paul George got? Well, I mean, the Clippers had no choice. Paul George had all the leverage. Like, him and Kawhi, you know, coming up on that player option, they had all the leverage. So it was like they backed Steve Ballmer into a corner. And it was like he had to do that. He can't afford to – well, I mean, I can't say he can't afford to do nothing. If you're talking about one of the richest guys in the United States. But mm – -hmm. He, as a businessman, you know, you separating yourself from the Lakers and you building an arena in Inglewood and all this. You got to put some, you got to put some, uh, some butts in them seats. You know what I mean? So, you know, he had to do this signing and the right place at the right time. That's Paul George. What do you make of LaMelo Ball in Charlotte? Oh, I love it. I wish the Knicks could have got him, but he's, he's going to flourish well. Um, he's going to, he's box office. He's going to, you know, if, if, you know, I'm looking down the line past COVID, uh, when, when fans are able to get back into the arenas at full strength, mm -hmm. he's going to sell out arenas. Like, you know, when he's traveling around the world, people are going to want to go see LaMelo ball. Mm -hmm. And he has the swagger along with the game to make up as a franchise guy, you know, six, eight, 
could do it all, passing. He's battle tested. Got the shooting abilities. Got the thing string on the uh the ball on the handle. And he's a winner. He's a winner. Like everywhere he's been, not only do he put up ridiculous numbers, but he wins basketball games. So if I'm if I'm the Hornets, I'm I am very thrilled to have Lamelo Ball. Uh, if I'm a fan of the Hornets. If I'm a fan of the Hornets, I'm not so thrilled of Gordon Haywood getting a hundred million dollars. <laughs> yeah, he 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 uh he got the bag too. Yeah, for this. <laughs> Good. Tell me something. As a you and I are the same age, even though you are an old soul. Um when I look at um you, the dynamics with LeBron, I put you and Joe King Noah in the same category of the not on Le LeBron James committee while you played, but I feel like you that changed when y'all became teammates. What was it about LeBron that you did that you guys didn't get along? Was that media or was there a misunderstanding? What happened? Well, nothing, nothing happened, and people think that, but you have to realize I I've been knowing LeBron since I was in the seventh grade. Okay. Ron and I played on the same AAU team when we were juniors and seniors called the Oakland Soldiers. Right. And so that relationship was always there. Class of 2003 where, you know, we was in the McDonald's game together, ABCD camp together. Like, we were everywhere. It wasn't LeBron James without a Kendrick Perkins being there when we was coming up in high school. It just wasn't there. He right. was in the tournament. I was there. You know, vice versa. So – you know, as we got into those battles on the, in the Celtic days and in the Oklahoma City days, it never was no harsh words between LeBron and I about nothing too crazy. Like, you know, we used to battle it out. But I'm going to tell you something. When I got to Cleveland and I saw the grown, the man LeBron James, my respect level went through the roof on him because I didn't know all this behind-the-scenes work, right? I didn't know the, the five and the eight five in that morning uh, morning lifts before practice, get to practice, practice hard, practice, uh, work out with the guys after practice, probably go shoot a commercial, call me, hey, Perk, man, we kicking there in my house watching the game. I'm on my way, go over there, he get treatment around the clock. Like, I didn't see this LeBron James. I didn't see, I was able to witness and respect the man that he has become because just know, school B, I was the guy that was with, I was the, the guy that was in the same class as him well, he was 16 years old and got labeled the chosen one. Mm -hmm. So I'm watching him deal with all this pressure, an iconic figure, and in, in the way that he moves and conducts himself as a family man, as a businessman, as a, a professional basketball player. I mean, it's, it's nothing no one could tell me about LeBron James. You played on the Boston Celtics team with Rondo, Pierce, Allen, Garnett, Doc Rivers was the head coach. Even Sam Cassell was on that team in 2008. He won a championship with you guys. I guess my question is, how could anyone breathe? There were so many personalities in that locker room at the same time, including you, and you was a young OG back then. Yeah, yeah, but you, you, you know what? It was, it was, it was great because I tell so many people that. You have to understand when Paul, Ray, and KG came together and formed the Big Three in Boston, they was at the end of their careers almost. And they had accomplished everything that they needed to accomplish individually. The only thing that was left for all of them guys was to win the championship. And so with that being said, it wasn't hard for them to sacrifice. And the person who set the, the tone was arguably the best person on the squad, and that was KG. He took a back seat early, so you watching KG, a guy that didn't want every award that you possibly could name, and you watch him take a back seat. Shit, everybody had to fall in line. And that was the good thing about it was that we had vets like, you know, those three guys, P.J. Brown, Sam Cassell, James Posey, that we policed ourselves. Doc ain't have to tell us nothing. We policed ourselves because we all knew that what we was trying to accomplish was bigger than any one individual. Why is it that there are there are members of that championship team that take Ray Allen leaving Boston and going to Miami so personally? Well, you know, 
I wasn't there when Ray left, okay. but I think a part of it is, you know, God said that, you know, because Doc had Ray coming off the bench. And I think Ray wasn't pleased about it. And I heard when he did join Miami, it was how he did it. He didn't call anybody. He didn't hit nobody up. You know, the Celtics had an offer on the table for him. He just didn't answer the phone. Next thing you know, bam, everybody reading about Ray joining the Miami Heat. And so people are like, God darn, Ray, like, we didn't been a war together. Like, we, we don't we don't have enough respect from you for you to hit us up. So after that, you know, the guys were kind of like, nah, we cool on Ray. Do you think that there is a chance for reconciliation? And if so, what would have to happen? I think it is. I, I think it is. Uh, you know, but it's, it's going to have to be guys accidentally meeting up. Because I'm telling you, trying to get guys to come to one place, you know, trying to call KG to say, hey, man, we're going to dinner, man. Oh, yeah, Ray going to be there. No, nah, it ain't happening. So it's going to have to happen by accident. I'm going to have to set it up and set all the guys up. Hey, man, look, Ray, I'm going to Vegas. Come meet me out there. Have KG meet me out there. And then just don't tell them. But – Nah, them doing it intentionally and meeting up, I don't see that. Who is the modern day Tim Duncan? Oh, mm. man, I, you know, that's a good question, but it's nobody. Nobody. It, Tim Duncan had a game that you can't mimic. Like, it's no way a guy can mimic that. Like, it was, it was so basic, but so skilled. Like, and, and he just got the job done. I don't, I don't see nobody, not in this modern day, that's a, a, a Tim Duncan. Like, I, I won't even disrespect him like that. Is Donovan Mitchell the modern day Dwayne Wade? Yeah, yeah, he is. The way that he moved through the lane, how crafty he is, even the walk with the shoulders, you know, the it's just it's something about his whole swag is is D Wade ish, and I think. Uh, you know, when you look at D. Wade, when he first came in, he was dunking everything. He was super athletic. Uh, and that's that's who Donovan Mitchell is, chase down blocks, all that. Yeah, yeah, he is the modern-day D. Wade. That's a good comparison. If you and Kevin Durant were able to sit down over dinner and air out any grievances that you guys or miscommunications that you've had over dinner, two-part question, what would the meal consist of? How would you squash the miscommunication? Well, if we was to sit down over any meal, it would be the Turkey Leg Hut, a famous restaurant out here in the H Town, right? And 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 it wouldn't be no beef to squash. I don't even think KD and I would even have nothing to say to each other on that on them terms. We would just dive straight into conversation, and usually probably dive into basketball talk, which goes dive into family talk, and then we just take off from there. You know, things that's known don't have to be said. Sure. The Boston Celtics, the team you played for, um, they lost to the Heat in the playoffs. Um, they added Tristan Thompson. They added Jeff Teague. Kemba Walker is going to miss some part of the early season. Uh, they still have Jalen Brown, um, and they still have the same head coach. What do you um, look to seeing? What do you look forward to seeing with that team this coming season? Well, you already know that they going to be grinding and, and, and gritty and guys playing like they got it out the mud. It's going to be dangerous to see Marcus Smart at the four and Tristan Thompson at the five. They go to be – it's going to be like hell for guys in the paint. But I'm, I'm anxious to see not Jason Tatum, but Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown is one of my favorite players and I think one of the best two-way players in the game today. A guy that was getting you 20 points on – 48% shooting and locking you up on the other end. So I'm looking for JB to raise his points average to about 25 a night. And I'm looking for him to at least make an all defensive team. So I'm looking forward to watching Jalen Brown. Clay Thompson is out for the year in Golden State. A um, few more questions. He's out this year for Golden State. The Warriors have been pretty much sitting at home for a year, chilling, watching tape, getting right. Which team holds the biggest threat for the Lakers to repeat? I mean, you, even with Klay Thompson being out, you have to say, you know what? I'm going to say the Denver Nuggets. I'm going to say the Denver Nuggets. 
And I thought the Denver Nuggets had messed up by letting Grant walk. But me watching uh, Bo Bo <laughs> work out, <laughs> like, he looked phenomenal. And then, you know, you add in, you know, Murray and, 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 and Michael Porter Jr. along with Jokic, and I'm like, ooh, this team is going to be dangerous. And then they're well coached. And then they made it to the Western Conference Finals what, uh, uh, last year, and, and Jamal Murray got his confidence back and his swagger back, and I'm looking like, this team, this team is going to be the truth. And let's let's not forget, Harris was coming off an injury last year, so he didn't even have – was able to catch his full stride. You get a healthy Denver Nuggets team right now, mm-hmm. so they can finish number two in the Western Conference. If Derrick Rose were to be traded from the Pistons to another team, where would he have instant impact on if a contender was able to get him? The Los Angeles Clippers. I think if you got a chance to land D Rose, you take D Rose, and because you know a, a, a healthy D Rose is better than Patrick Beverly and Reggie Jackson, so you instantly got a guy that could go for twenty to thirty points on any given night, possibly fifty. One of the most athletic point guards to ever touch the damn basketball, and he's he showed us last year because he. I thought that. He had a strong possibility of making an all-star game. So you get a chance to get a guy like D. Rose for low risk and high reward, you got to grab him. Do you see Giannis Antetokounmpo resigning with the Milwaukee Bucks? I do. I do. I do. I mean, if if I'm in Giannis' corner and I'm part of his 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 his, his group or I'm part of I'm somebody that he gets advice from, I'm telling him there's no way you can pass up your letters. And the team is doing everything that that they supposed to do for us getting you help. I thought the Drew Holiday move was huge. Uh, them trying to get uh, Bondanovich was huge. It, although it didn't work, they showing that they're trying to move in the right direction. Now you get your money, and we need you to go be Giannis MVP Giannis in the postseason, not in the regular season. We need this performance out of you in the postseason. Do you see Jamal Crawford resigning with the team this season? I do. I do. At some point, I think JC uh, deserve a chance. Uh, I, I, what he looked like before he got hurt in the bubble was phenomenal. He was getting buckets, still facilitating. But he's a leader, man. He's a leader in, in, a, in a locker room that, that can help guide those younger guys. And I think the NBA as a whole, they take these veteran guys for granted. Especially the good ones. That's why the Lakers, they, nah, Jerry Dilly, come back here. We're going to get you, we're going to get you out the way. You coming back. Like, you can't take those type of guys for granted. Guys that's going to be, that's, that's going to sit on the bench for five or six games, but be ready to play on the seventh game and stay professional. Who's going to be clapping it up? Who's going to be giving advice to these young guys about how to be professional on and off the court? You got to, you got to think about this. Guys are, the NBA now is so cheap that they don't want to pay $2.4 million to a great bet to come in. Why not? Why not? Isaiah Thomas is 31. I talked to Earl Watson. He thinks Portland would be a good fit for him. What say you? Do you see a – would a Boston Celtics reunion be cool? Where do you see him fitting? I would, I would love to see IT back in Boston. I think Boston would – and, and not knowing what's going to happen with Kimba, it would be a great fit. Uh, and then just think about what they have, like the history of what he done for the Celtics organization. Yeah, he didn't win championships, but he literally laid his body on the line for their organization. And I understand a business move happened, but if I'm Danny Ainge, I'm going out there and I'm going to get an IT because it's just adding more firepower to the bench. I was with you uh, at that Lakers Sixers game on January 25th uh, when LeBron broke that record, uh, broke Kobe's record. Kobe, of course, passed the next day. What do you remember about Kobe Bryant? Man, I just I just remember Kobe mindset, man. Just the way that he approached the game. Uh, you know, when you think about a fierce competitor, you think of Kobe Bryant. Like he wasn't backing down from nobody. If you had, like, it, it's very rare that you have a guard, a shooting guard, that's your enforcer on your team. Like, 
Kobe was on his on those Lakers squads, and he was the enforcer. The way he carried himself, uh, what he brought to the table, and and what I think about is when I think of the Mamba mentality, I think of Kobe Bryant. When I think about no one in a no one that I could even think of would have been able to handle what Kobe did, how Kobe handled that Denver situation, uh, what he was going through, and right. still being able to go back and show up to work and give people 40 pieces. Like, you got to think about how mentally strong you have to be to do something like this. So when I think of Kobe, man, I think of the fierce competitor, that enforcer that was at the two guard and one of the best to ever do it. Last question. If you and Charles Barkley had the opportunity to sit down and have a podcast, what would you call it and what would make it different than any other podcast? We Charles Barkley is from Alabama, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm from Texas. Yes. So it's only right that two guys that speak with broken English don't yeah. use words out of the encyclopedia. You know, stutters, mumbles, whatever, but you get what we saying. You hear what we saying. Yeah. You would have to call it the country boys. <laughs> would would it be over cigars, over food? Would it be straight conversation? Would it be interviews? Because yeah. I really think y'all got something. I think it would be it would be food and cigars. But you gotta you gotta give Charles some wine or something because I feel like uh 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 a sober charge, you're not going to get the real, but right. a charge that's not sober, you're going to get everything you're looking for. <laughs> you heard it first. Mr. Perkins, always a pleasure to talk to you, good brother. School B, same here, man. I appreciate you having me on. You're a busy dude doing everything on First Take and all of ESPN's programming. I, I, I'm, I'm telling you, you and Stephen A are booked and busy. <laughs> Yes, sir. I appreciate you, brother. You guys heard Kendrick Perkins. Check him out on all platforms. You heard him. I'll talk to you guys soon.